very happy to be joined by these two brilliant guys. Uh, do you want to start us off with an intro to yourselves and your books? Chris, you go first. Oh, are you doing this again, are you? I am. Passing the I buck. Am. But it, but anyone, I hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Let, let's let's not get off on the wrong foot here. For anyone that was watching the opening, uh, the opening of the festival uh, yesterday, where I hosted, I had the dubious honour of hosting Mr. Chris McDonald and the wonderful honour of hosting uh, Victoria Down. I happened to mention that my grandmother, my late grandmother, always said, uh, "Let ladies, ladies first. You know, and 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 I mentioned this yesterday, and it kind of felt that Victoria, poor bless her was getting uh, all the difficult questions first. So um, I'm continuing in that chivalrous uh, that chivalrous route, Chris, but... Passing it on, I will take it. Um, <laughs> yesterday I showed my singular books, but today I'm going to show The Omnibus, which I think, yeah. is that right? Omnibus? It is um, an omnibus, yeah. Yeah, um, so it's got all six in it, all six Stonebridge Mysteries, um, and there are the covers on the front. Um, Stonebridge Mysteries are follow Adam and Colin, two amateur sleuths around a fictional town in Northern Ireland. Um, and they are faced with six different mysteries. Um, and hopefully they're a lot of fun. They were fun to write. And um, and the feedback that I've got from them are very nice. So um, yeah, hopefully they're fun. Jonathan? Uh, and my name is Jonathan Whitelaw. I am the author of the Bingo Hall Detectives. Um, which is a cosy mystery series set in uh, the Lake District um, in and around Penrith in the general Cumbria area. And it follows the adventures and misadventures of a mother-in-law and son-in-law detective duo uh, with the Bingo Hall Detectives where they are investigating the death of a fellow member of the Penrith Bingo Club. And the new one, the Village Hall Vendetta, is out in May. And we did a cover reveal last week, was it? Two weeks ago. And it's been very, very positively received which is always the, the nerve-wracking part about being a writer is uh, praise from your peers <laughs> everybody else but no it's been it's been great it's uh, and, I, and i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed writing the series and i thoroughly enjoyed chris's series as well oh, and i thoroughly enjoyed jonathan's first that's what he's not letting me read the second one yet and um, that's what i was fishing for that's what i was fishing for <laughs> so the the sort of theme of our panel is the secret of cozy crime sort of staying popular for so long. So I thought I'd start us off with what you think the sort of prototype kind of cosy crime author was who started the genre going. Oh, oh, it's a tough one. It's a, it's it's a hard one. I thought you how you mean to go on. If Victoria I... died is to be believed, it's Agatha Christie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what the conclusion we came to. Yes. Well, I don't know if it was a conclusion, but yeah. I... Uh, it's uh, it's 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 certainly a good starting point. I think um, I think all the tropes that that have now become synonymous with with the cozy crime and, and one one of the things that we chatted about yesterday on the on the panel um, was a well the, the theme of the panel yesterday was the was cozy on the edge. You know how dark can cozy really get? And and you know for me for for me I, I'm a sort of traditional cozy coziest as it were. You know I like my cozy crime with quirky characters with a you know a, a, a remoteish setting with um obviously without any of the, the gratuitous violence and sex and things like that um and i mean you know retrospectively looking back on it i guess agatha christie she she has all those hallmarks throughout the books as well as as we again as we discussed before um fairly dark elements to it but i think yeah i, th I think i think i think agatha christie for me gets that gets the nod mostly because of her general popularity mm. she's from that she's from that sort of golden age or she was the inventor of that that golden age of detective fiction and i'm sure i'm sure i may be out by a couple of years or what have you but um she's synonymous with that so-called golden age of, of, of detective fiction and that golden age of detective fiction i think retrospectively has been regarded as as a sort of hotbed for the uh, for for what's become cozy crime because of course it was she wasn't writing cozy crime that wasn't a term that was being used um, when she was being published was it it's it's that that's been that's been sort of tagged on latterly but yeah I think I think so I mean you know it's Miss Marple I guess is the is your sort of archetypal cozy cozy uh, cozy detective mm -hmm. or the amateur the amateur sleuth thrown into the world of of intrigue mystery mayhem and and uh, ultimately triumphs. 
Um, that's that's yeah, that that's I would agree. That's a very long-winded and overblown way of saying that I agree with Chris. <laughs> oh, you both agree with Victoria. And we yeah, both agree with Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the wiser person in life in our heads. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sam said she guesses with Cozy you don't expect any darkly shocking elements but you still need a gripping story and plenty to surprise and hook you, something you both manage incredibly well. Oh, that's very kind. kind. Very, very kind. It's it's a tricky it's a tricky thing, uh, Cozy. I, 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 it, it's a tricky balance to get, I find. Um, it, it's, it's a tricky balance between going you know, walking that tightrope between the ridiculous and sublime I, I often find because I think with cozy crime in particular, there's an expectation when you pick up the book, both as a reader and 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 then when you're a writer. And Chris, I, I don't know if you agree with me on this one. Please feel free to to, to please feel free to agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I find there's there's that tricky balance between too quirky that becomes the ridiculous, uh, particularly with the humour. You know, I don't I don't like pie in the face humour. Um, I, 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 but but there's but there's so much room in, in cozy crime to have humour in it, and actually, if anything, it's a sort of hallmark of a, of a cozy crime novel is to have gallons and gallons of humour. But again, you don't want it to be a gag a minute. You also don't want things to, to spiral so out of control that they are farcical. Um, but then again, I love a caper, and I I, I love to read a caper. I, I love a, a, a a caper, you know, and almost the more ridiculous the better. But there is unbelievably there is a there is a limit to that. Um, and striking that balance, I think, is that that's that's probably the hardest thing for me as a cozy writer. I think, yeah, I, I, I think so. Is, is that walking that tightrope? Mm. Yeah, agreed. Um, got a good question for you from the beginning. Uh, she said, "Hi all." Do you think that the Agatha Christie books were the crime fiction of their time, but have since been labelled as cosy because we've got newer and grittier authors nowadays? Probably, yeah. Because I mean, I've I've not read loads. I think I'm probably up to about five or six, um, and they're probably the ones that everyone has read. Um, Victoria yesterday mentioned Endless Night, which I haven't read, but it, she said it's probably one of the darkest ones. Um, I've I've read a couple of the the Miss Marples and. I didn't really get on with them, um, but the Poirots I really, really enjoyed more. Um, and I guess the Miss Marples are the more cosy ones because it's not the, the detective that you expect. I mean, you expect the detective to turn up and solve the case, but an old lady probably isn't. And she probably was the first cosy detective that, or not detective, a <laughs> cosy character um, that's solving the crime. So... She probably did set it off, but it probably was um, exactly. It says Facebook user on the thing. I can't see who it was. Um, it was but it's, bad. Ah, I think it's a really good point. Yeah, I think it probably was crime. Um, I said yesterday, um, my opinion hasn't changed in 24 hours, <laughs> that a body is the inciting incident, and that's the shocking thing. And a crime is a crime, and the repercussions of that are endless. So it probably is, you know. I think I read something last night. I went, I went and did some homework, and it said that uh, Agatha Christie did her thing. Then hard-boiled fiction started to become more popular, and then as a marketing tool, Agatha Christie was given the cozy label. So, yeah, I think it it probably was as gritty as she could make it, and then obviously the, the sort of harder-boiled American tales came out. So yeah, I think that's a very good point. I think that uh, I agree. Um, I think the uh, fiction has always been, particularly crime fiction, has always been a reflection of the society that it, that that it, it feeds. You know, it, it feeds the imagination, um, and it's changed so often with with audience tastes. As as has a lot of art. I mean, don't get me wrong. The cinema that you go and see today in twenty twenty three is very very different to what it was like in nineteen twenty three and indeed nineteen seventy three, for example. And it's exactly the same with fiction. Uh, and I think that I think tastes have changed. I think I mentioned yesterday. I'm, I'm, I, I did mention yesterday. I I started reading James J. Uh, Patterson Hunt for, Red, Hunt for Red October. Not James Patterson. It's it's. Mm -hmm. um, it's someone else. Oh, someone will tell me in a minute. Um, I, that's ridiculous. I, I should know who it is. 
Uh, anyway, I started reading A Hunt for Red October and it came out in the early 80s and it's very, very technical and it's very, very technical and would have been bang up to date when it came out to the point of sort of forensic detail. And I stopped reading it because it felt very, very dated. Uh, not that I've got a boundless knowledge of tactical submarines and, and CIA procedures and things like that. It, but it was it was just very very old. It felt very very old, and that's madness when you consider that it was only what less than forty years ago. Um, whereas it's still a reflection, though. You know that 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 novel, The Hunt for Red October, is is still regarded as as a seminal novel in that whole you know sci-fi. Tom Clancy, Laura Hamilton came to my rescue and said, "Tom Clancy, of course it was." Um, you know, a, a seminal piece of work in that in that in in that. A form of fiction and, and spy thriller, um, but I just couldn't get on with it. I, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get past the fact that it, 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 it was too technical. That's out of date now, and I think with cozy crime, particularly, I, I guess if if it wasn't Agatha Christie that started it, if it, if it wasn't an author who had who, who was so revered uh, and and so groundbreaking at the time. And to then be repackaged exactly as Chris says to, to keep going, you know, to, to, to compete against that that sort of change in taste, um, you know, would it would it still be as popular? Would it would it remain as popular? I don't know, but I guess that's that's what we're on the panel to discuss. <laughs> I mean, it obviously it, it dips in popularity at times, doesn't it? But it's seen to be on yeah. a big increase in recent years. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Why do you think that, like, now is the time that we're loving, like, that cosy kind of resurgence so much? I, I, I think, I, I think it's escapism. We, we chatted, we chatted briefly yesterday on on the panel about the escapism element of it, and I think, uh, and I mentioned actually that I, when I, when I sit down and write the Bingo Hall Detectives novels, it's an escape for me because. Exactly as Chris says, there's still a murder to be solved. There's still someone dead in in suspicious circumstances. There's still a heinous, heinous crime that has to be that has to be solved ultimately. Um, but how you get to that point and and the journey towards the the, the reveal and the the resolution of the investigation uh, is total escapism. Certainly for me as as the as the writer and as a reader as well. You know, the, 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 there's a great comfort I think in settling down with an Agatha Christie novel in particular, just at, at random, or a Chris McDonald novel. Uh, and there is there is genuinely, and I'm not saying I'm genuinely not that that, that isn't that isn't uh, that isn't my usual flippancy, but it's true. It's when you, when you sit down with a with a cozy crime novel, you have a certain expectation as to what's going to happen in it, or indeed you have a certain expectation as to what will not happen in it necessarily, and a lot of that is total fantasy. And I think having that having that route out of what can be a very very difficult world at times. Uh, is 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 a godsend for me anyway as a writer, but certainly as a reader too. And and I think the uh, that sort of enduring that enduring exit is 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 valuable. Uh, and uh, Victoria said it yesterday, didn't she, Chris? It's it's a the, 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 there's a correlation between the popularity of, of, of the cozy genre and when times are tough, whether it's economically or, or socially or what have you. And I think it is. I think it's exactly that. You, everybody needs comforted. Everybody, everybody wants that. Wants that comfort. Everyone wants that escape. Sometimes from the from the brutality of it. That, that maybe perhaps other genres, other parts of of, of crime fiction, and certainly. And again, I think I said this yesterday. I, it's the idea that, you know, if I've had a tough day at work, do I really want to be sitting down and reading? Paragraph after paragraph after paragraph of, of a blow by blow detail of someone's head being caved in. For example, that you might get in a in a police procedural. Now, a lot of people do. That's fine. That's okay. It doesn't it doesn't work for me though. That I, I need to spend time with Amita and Jason in, in in Cumbria, having them deal with someone who's had their head caved in, but you just don't see it. You know, that's that's the and that's not a spoiler. That's just an example. But that's the, that, that's the that's the, the the way out. That's the way out for me. Yeah, I agree. I think it's um like what you just said. The, there, I and I as a teacher, I find myself in Kaz. I don't know if you're the same, but as the term goes on and the amount of brain power you have left as a reader, 
I find following an investigation in a police procedure book quite difficult because there's there's chain of command and there's characters and there's people going off to do different stuff. Whereas Cozy, there tends to be a one man band or or a duo, and they don't have to follow procedure. They're literally, and I use the word bumbling for my characters, but they they sort of find clues. They go and investigate, but in the end, they have no more experience than me, put really. So. As a reader, I find it really um, like sort of chilling, not chilling, chilling out. I don't know what the better way to say that is. Um, and this is the start of term. It's about to start tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, relaxing, I guess. The fact that you don't have to expend so much brain power in that, you can, and you can do that in your job, whatever. Um, I think there's comfort in it, and, and comfort's the word that I think springs to mind when I think of cozy. True. Uh, yeah, I'm exactly the same. Cozy crime. I'm a big fan. It's probably like one of my favourite crime genres. And probably for the very same reason. Kaz, was yeah. that, if you, if you don't mind me asking, is, was was that <laughs> always the case? Were you always were you always a big, big Cozy fan sort of growing up? and Or, or, or is it something that's happened, you know, latterly? Well, not, um, I don't really know about growing up. Uh, yeah. I think I've always been a bit of a cosy fan. So I love Charlene Harris's kind of cosy series, is, you know, like the Aurora Tea Garden and things like that. And I like them before we started the group. It is a genre that I particularly like. That and urban fantasy are probably my two favourites, which are the opposite ends of each other, weirdly. <laughs> but... Well, you never know. That doesn't, I'll say there's a crossover there somewhere. I'm sure there, <laughs> I'm sure there, I'm sure there should be. Like, yeah, like a cosy um, sort of magical bookshop owner or something. There we go. There Get you it go, right. yeah. Get it right. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I will pay um, you £10 right now for the rights. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about um, being kind of marketed as cosy authors? Because some people really are, like push against it, don't they? Some people are really like not okay with being put in that genre, even if their books are. Chris, what do you uh, think? Well, I quite like it. I I, I think because I, I don't know what genre I write the most in because I did six novellas and that, but I've done police procedure and I've done like sort of hard boiled. Um, but I, I mean, I was absolutely ecstatic to be um to be included when they came out. Um, I did a, like this panel uh, and this weekend has been amazing, and to think that there would be people that wouldn't be happy to be involved in it is ridiculous to me. Um. Especially, and I, I guess there's there's been a resurgence in recent years. Um, even before that, I mean, I feel very lucky to be included. It's a fantastic community, and it's a lovely, lovely, <laughs> peaceful community. People who write crime tend to be nice people, and um, I'm just happy to be part of the the crowd here. Especially if Jonathan's involved, always oh, happy to, to be following in his footsteps. Sickening, <laughs> absolutely sickening. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Uh, yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm, um, I'm delighted. I, I, I love cozy crime. I, I, I've always loved it as a reader, and the idea that I would be branded as a cozy crime author is is thrilling to me. It, it, being an author, full stop, is, is is a very, 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 very privileged position to be in, uh, and I'm hugely, hugely humbled and hugely, hugely grateful for the opportunities that I that I have and have had. Um, and I think it's 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 a weird one. It's it, it's a strange one because I think um, I, I do a lot of teaching over here, and a lot of the a lot of the sort of creative writing uh, workshops and things like that that I do, you get authors who are very very or aspiring authors, I should say, who are very 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 strict in how they want to be branded, as it were, or indeed not branded, um, and. It, it leads, I think, to a lack of flexibility. And one, one thing that I've found being a writer is that you need flexibility in, in every element of the job, whether that's changing a character's name or, you know, going down a different route for a, a particular investigation or even a, the style that you're writing. And I always say that to them. I always go, look, if you're, if you're sitting right now, if you sit down and start writing a crime fiction novel that you want it to be a police procedural, uh, and you find that you don't want to have a, a cop or a law enforcement lead character, you don't want to have it set into a, 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 a massive sprawling urban setting, 
and you don't want to write any gore about the actual murder in particular, then you're probably not going to get away. You're not going to get very far writing a police procedural with it. You might be better going down the, the cosy, the cosy crime route, for example. And again, it always it always amazes me that the people are, are are very very you know very very strict on on what they want to be perceived as. It's it's never as I say I'm 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 lucky enough to be in a position where I'm I'm called a writer, which is which is which is great. And I, I, I love being called a cosy crime writer because it's a wonderful it's a wonderful genre. It's a, a popular genre, but regardless of its popularity, it's it's one that I've always loved. It's always one that I've always enjoyed. And and you aspire, I think, you aspire to do these sorts of things as a, as a writer. You aspire to be to emulate the 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 writers and the great work that you've read and you're a fan of. And to be in that conversation is is very very special. And you never it never. It never gets less special. No. Do you think if you were to write in a different genre, you would use a different name? Probably from a marketing point of view. I think this is the this is the classic. This is a sort of art versus business argument, isn't it? W w within within any sort of art. Yeah. Um, it's it's just the nature of the the nature of the business that you have. To, I mean, the classic one there is is Ian Banks, the late great Ian Banks. Of course, used to write um, literary fiction and sort of you know. A, family family dramas but he'd always been a massive science fiction fan and and he, he wrote the he wrote things like the crow road and espadere street and and what have you because that was his big break but he always wanted to write sci-fi so he wrote his ian e m banks and of course he was massively successful as, as ian e. m banks as the a uh, as the sci-fi author and, and brilliant stuff as well i, I would highly recommend well, read any ian e. banks he's unfortunately not with us in fact I had a conversation with someone not that long ago that it's it's been it's been nearly a decade since 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 he died unfortunately he was, he was painfully young and very very much missed um and it's it, yeah he, he he's a he's a sort of prime example of someone who was not only successful in one genre but successful in a completely different genre and okay he only added an m to his name but it was it was always very much branded as a as, as a different as a different thing um and yeah it, it's it, i mean that's the thing i love writing cozy crime that, like i i i i found a great home in it i think for me as a writer um not just with the exactly as chris says the the, the community and the uk crime book clubs are a prime example of that community um not just that not just that element of it but i think just in terms of the style and the expectations of you as a writer when it comes to, to sitting down and doing a cozy crime I, I i i love it and it feels it feels really really comfortable it feels very much at home and and, and it's still got its challenges of course it's, of course it's still got its challenges uh, and that's what you want you want you know you're right you don't want to ever get complacent as a writer um and to have these challenges one of the biggest challenges i find and chris you'll probably well you might not agree with me but if you do that would that'd be lovely again um, is coming up with ideas and reasons as to why your amateur sleuths are 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 investigating a murder, for example. You know that that's a that's the first question I ask myself when I sit down and write a new Bingo Hall Detective novel is why are why are Jason and Amateur the lead on this investigation and not the police? Um, and it's hard. <laughs> it's it's hard. Yeah. It's, hard the, it's hard the more you do it, you know, because you you don't you start. You start running out of legitimate ideas, or you know, you think you start running out of legitimate ideas, but there's always something, you know, there's always something, and that's the great, that's the great thing about cozy crime is that there's again, there's an expectation there from the reader to uh, that, that you do this and you do it properly and you do it believably. Ultimately. Is it hard to keep that believable though? Those situations that you put in the mind. I I think so. I I, I think so. I I uh, you know, I'm I'm a journalist and. I live relentlessly in the real world for for, for work because you have to, right? Um, and I find that my sort of my approach to it is if I believe it, if I believe it with my journalism hat on, then it should be okay. It should be all right. People should believe it there because that's the thing. Like in a police procedural, you've got a lead, lead character that's a detective. It's their job. You know, more often than not, most police procedures and certainly successful series, the, the detective, it's more, it's so much more to them than a job. It's their passion and all the rest of it. But, you know, the, 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 a cop gets up in the morning at seven o'clock and gets the call to go investigate a murder at nine, the same way that we all go and do our jobs at the, at the same time. Um, 
and that believability is that that's the, that's that's the challenge because that's the thing like again we're all readers and you know yourself when you get taken out of that world for whatever reason it's 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 not great and it's it's always a pressure i think as a as a writer particularly a cozy crime writer to do is that is to keep that believability yeah agreed i, I mean i wrote six in that series um and two of them i had to take away from one set in a cruise ship and one set on like a little island um one set in a remote part of the country during the 12th weekend which in northern ireland the police are you know all over the belfast um swarming off trouble so that was the first one because i thought well the police can't get there because they're they'll be so busy so they'll send two people who are like hurried off their feet and won't really have time to check the body and that wouldn't happen in real life, obviously, because otherwise the police, I mean, those would be fired straight away. Um, but I think it's about trying to make either maybe no body, so it's just the disappearance and the police can't investigate a body, because usually if a body's been badly hurt enough to be killed or whatever, there's evidence that, you know, a blow to the head or whatever. Um, so it's all about, I think, yeah, trying to find either location situations where it's impossible or very hard for the police to get to or a body that doesn't show signs of that or no body to start with um uh yeah it's hard and i find after six <laughs> almost impossible to think of any more where where the entire police force wouldn't just be replaced with competent people it's i mean think, listen, no sorry guys don't carry on do you think it limits like the length of a series then Sort of making it a cozy one. Do you think you're kind of limited to how many you can write before you become midsummer? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> um, I had sent Sean uh, Red Dog the sort of next six ideas, and I had them all sort of penciled out. So that would have taken it to twelve, and I think that that the next six were plausible as well. So I think there's always a way around it, and I mean, there's great comfort in in a series like that. Um, I mean, Ellie Griffiths is. Obviously, they're not cosies, but but there's so much comfort in coming back to them, and and you almost sort of don't care that the situation might not warrant the police response or something like that. You just want to spend time with the characters, and I think cosies a mass. That's one of the main draws that keep me coming back to certain series. Like they could be investigating anything, and obviously the the story has to hold your attention. But I could read Ellie Griffith's series with just them in a room or, or like a birthday party or something. And it's the characters that keep you coming back. So I think the, the crimes almost come secondary if you've established a good, a good character that you want to come back to. It's, it's one of the big appeals for me writing them is, is exactly what Chris says is the character is, is getting to grips with the character. And it's not to say that no other genre of crime doesn't afford you the room you know, they, Lee Child famously always says that he goes into bookstores and he'll speak to staff and staff say to him that the people are, are out looking for the next Jack Reacher. You know, they don't ask when the next Lee Child book's out, they ask when the next Jack Reacher book's out. And that's a classic example of someone doing a character and doing it well. And, you know, those books are as far removed from, from cosy crime as you can as you could possibly imagine. Um, and that's reflected across the, across the whole industry. I think the... Yeah, I, the, I think with Cozy, you're afforded a little bit more room to have that development and to spend a bit more time with those characters, certainly from the off, you know, within, say, the first of the series. And the appeal for me as a reader, and it's the appeal for me as the writer as well, is to is that challenge is to create that those characters and, and that character that, that, that readers want to spend time with. Um, one thing I'm always acutely aware of is there is a degree of suspended belief with any crime novel, I guess, with any novels, but in particular with cozy crime. However, you do not want to push that to its very limit, and and you want to respect, the, you want to respect the believability of, of of it as a as a fiction, as a as a genre. And yes, sometimes you might find that it might be a very very thin pretext to get a character from A to B, or that a character is doing something. Um, perhaps a lot thinner than it would be that you would get away with in, say, a police procedural or a hard-boiled or a psychological thriller or something like that, you know. And, and as, I think as long, I think, yeah, I, th I think exactly as Chris says, I think as long as you, I think as long as you've crafted a world that people want to spend time in and, and characters that want to spend time with, 
then you you know without without taking the biscuit, I think I think you 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 you'll be able to open yourself up a little bit and and give yourself a little bit more wiggle room in in the cozy genre than perhaps you might do in in any other sort of subgenre of crime because that's the thing like you know a police procedural you've got to have forensic detail of of the investigation you've got to have dna analysis you've got to have ballistics reports you've got to have procedure that that police have to adhere to you can't you know you really realistically in 21st century you can't really get away with a dirty harry-esque character unless it's sort of tongue firmly in cheek because that's not how the modern met or the modern psni or the modern you know police scotland that's not how they operate and readers know this readers readers know this i say this to my my students crime readers are, are are arguably the best readers in the world and i'm not just saying that because i'm on this panel <laughs> but they are the, they are the they are amongst the most loyal uh to to, to writers and they also have a a, a really really massive knowledge a uh, depth of how things work um through the, the amount that 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 crime readers read and you've got to respect that but you've also got to respect yourself as a writer you've got to respect yourself as a writer and do a good job and and, and a lot of that means not relying on the old we'll just suspend belief a little bit for this chapter so that we can move on to the bit that, that, that you know that that counts or that matters so i don't know laura says she thinks that the cozy crime genre is a lot more fresh and less formulaic compared to like where well, you can pretty much predict the plot well, I haven't said that, Laura. I'm a big fan of chocolate books as well, and sometimes I like the fact that you can predict the fact. Mm. That's it, isn't it? That's the that that's the that's the trick. That's the trick with a cozy crime novel. I think is that you know you've you one of the reasons I pick it up is that I know that things are going to turn out all right in the end. <laughs> you know, so that's and, and I guess if you if you put that on paper, if you say that out loud, it kind of feels like you're you're. Um, you're boxed in as a writer. That means that you can't leave anything uh, untied off or, or, or what have you. Which, is, of course, isn't true. You know, of course, of course, it's not true. Particularly if you've got a series. Particularly if you've got multiple books with, with the same characters, you can sort of layer in different uh, different threads and different stories that take multiple books to be to be resolved. Um, but I think I, I think that's one of the reasons that it's so popular is that is that you know what you're going to get. You know, you. you, you, you you do know what you're going to get and because there's so many crime uh, cozy crime writers out there now and so many people are doing so su such wonderful great work it's it's refreshing to see how how you know x approaches the cozy crime novel how y approaches the cozy crime novel and it's exciting as well because you're getting all these wonderful new ideas that are still within those sort of you know confines of of knowing that things are going to be all right in the end what are your, your favourite crazy crime reads recently? Who would you recommend people to go away read? Chris, I mean, you can't pick each other. Oh, I'm <laughs> Chris McDonald. Um, Chris, well, what I will say is Chris McDonald's a lot better read than uh, than most people that I know, so he can go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mentioned Anthony Horowitz yesterday, and I always will uh, if the situation warrants. Um, I think his Hawthorne series is. Uh, really inventive with how he's put himself in the story. Um, they're funny. Um, yeah, I think the humour in, in Anthony's books are the things that really... I mean, the mysteries are always so good as well because he's such a good writer. But um, yeah, his relationship with the detective, who's by his own admission not a very easy man to get on with, is really, really fun to read. Um, so I'd say the Hawthorne series. And then Janice Hallett, who is a fantastic writer, um, and I was thinking about this because she's marketed as cosy and the appeal definitely feels cosy um, because it's a cast of characters and, and things like that. The next two felt darker. Um, and I don't know if, 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 if it's just because the first one was in cosy that it's sort of that's her, her thing now. But I mean, she's a fantastic writer and all three books of hers have, you know, I've rushed through and, and I really do love um, but again, I mean, have have either of you two read the mysterious case of the is it the Alperton Angels? 
that's the most recent uh, one I have for research because I'm have the wonderful honor of speaking to Janice in a few hours to close oh, class. The, the cozy the cozy uh, the cozy festival. What a lovely segue there, Chris. What, what yeah, what, it was, was, wasn't it? That was very um, professional, very professional yeah. done there. Um it especially it might have returned slightly to cozy, but it, it deals with like a cult and, and things like that. And the second one felt like it, it was written from the point of view of um of a man that left himself voice notes and there was some really dark stuff cropped up. Um, so I don't know if, if uh, like I just said, I don't know if she was sort of, um, uh, tarred isn't the right word, but like her first one was cozy. So that's how she's being marketed. Whereas I, I really, I loved all three of her books, but I don't know if cozy is the right word for the, for the last two really, but I'd recommend anything she's ever written because she's very clever. The mysteries are great. And, um, the way she tells stories are, are, different to any, anybody what anyone's doing now. So yeah, those two. Anthony Horowitz, Janice Hallett. The Giants. The Giants. The Giants How, of the genre. Follow that? How do you follow the Giants? <laughs> With more Giants. Um, I've a, I, I'm very, very lucky in that I've gotten to know uh, GM Hall, um, who wrote A Spoonful Murder and A Pen Dipped in Poison, which is out next month, I think it was. Uh, or it is, sorry. Uh, and I've gotten to know him quite well over the last day, uh, last couple of months, because I was sent uh, his new one. And he's a wonderful writer. He, he's a real, really, really, really uh, lovely man uh, and a wonderful writer as well. He has a background in uh, theatre and um, uh, radio plays and stuff like that. So he's got a he's got a wonderful series, um, Spare, I believe it's called. That's on that was on Radio Four. I think it's I think it's I think it's three series of it. And it's about actually it's about teachers. It's about um, it's it's about a uh, teachers and the, and the sort of the the carry on that teachers have got to go through on a day to day basis. It doesn't actually involve teaching, and I would highly recommend it to everybody. Um, but he's a uh, his his pen dipped in poison spoonful murder. They are um, they're they're cozy they're cozy in a, in about as classic a, a sense as you can as you can write. And that and I don't mean that. In by no way, shape, or form, a criticism. Far from it, because that, to me, they are sort of archetypally what you want to sit down and and and, and read when it comes to comes to cozy crime. And they are written so colourfully, and the characters are, are literally leap off the page. And it's good to see that there's another one. Um, I, I'm not sure about the future of the series. I think that well, I don't. I don't know. Is the is the uh, I don't know for certain what the what the, the script is. But there's at least two come the end of next. Uh, next month, March, and I'd highly recommend those. So GM Hall's uh, series, they are top reads. They get two thumbs up from Jonathan Whitewell. <laughs> and if he puts that on the cover, I will be delighted. Uh, if he doesn't, <laughs> I'll be devastated. There you go. It's, it's, that, that, it, it, it's all or nothing with me, unfortunately. It's all or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always good to get recommendations, though, isn't it? I have oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, you know, we all we all complain, don't we? We all complain about our, our to be read pile is a uh, stretches from here to the moon. But we're always looking for recommendations. It's it's just the it's just the nature of the game. It's just the it's just the, the, the part the best part of it. Best part of being part of the community. I am trying to reduce my recommendations because my husband says one of us is going to die in the sliding book pile soon. <laughs> <laughs> Can I also recommend Chris McDonald's books as well? There, I, 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 you know, I, felt, that, I felt that we were, you know, I, I, I felt that he hadn't had enough publicity there for thirty seconds. So. <laughs> he didn't recommend yours back, though, did he? No, uh, and I never, won't. Never I won't. <laughs> never, never does. Matter of principle, unfortunately. But there you go. Who, who can, a man of principle, who the worst, the worst possible kind. <laughs> Sam's asked you if it's comforting as an author to create a world that you'd sometimes prefer to the real world. Definitely. Chris, you, you, you take it then. Yeah, I, mean, I, I wrote, um, I started my Cozy series um, during lockdown and it was very much an attempt to create Coleraine, which is where I'm from, my hometown in Northern Ireland. Um, I couldn't get home during lockdown and usually I'm not one to get homesick but I think it was because I literally couldn't get home and usually you've got a choice um but in this I literally couldn't so I brought Coleraine fictionalized although it's very very close to the to the real town 
Um, and there was a, a, an absolute comfort is the right word. There was a comfort in writing characters that trotted around my main streets and went to the library and and I mean the, the main character lives in my house at home and things like that so it was very much uh, almost semi-autobiographical <laughs> aside from the murders I would not be as brave or as stupid to get myself tangled up in anything like that um, but yeah it was it was um, it was fun just to write and and look at pictures even um it became a very nostalgic kind of thing of just dying to get there. So yeah, absolutely. I'd I'd very much like to go back to Stonebridge in real life. I think uh, I, I, one thing that one thing that I've come across, particularly with cozy writers, and again, it happens with all writers and, and and other crime writers too. But I think that there is always that personal connection, and it's usually a positive one. More often than not, ninety percent, ninety five percent of the time. Of, of a with writers having a connect cozy crime writers having a connection to whatever it is that they've created exactly as chris so uh, eloquently puts it there you know that the, the idea of being able to sit down and look at pictures of of the place that he grew up that i'm sure chris you know like the back of your hand but in a time of what was what was a crisis beyond any of our, our, our imaginations i imagine that was great great comfort and um yeah i i i completely agree i think Penrith, Cumbria, the Lake District for me in in the Bingo Hall Detectives uh, holds very very fond memories throughout my whole life. In fact, uh, and it's not you know it's not it's it's silly it's silly things it's it's silly little things that you don't that you don't think you ever remembered until you sit down and you find yourself subconsciously having put characters in in streaks and places that that. That, that have that effect on you, that have that sort of nostalgic effect on you, and I think that's I think that's one of its one of the enduring appeals of, of cozy crime is that people inherently, whether it's a fictionalized version or 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 it is a real place, um, obviously that's the difference between Chris and I. But I think readers will readers will inherently share their own experiences of being in scenarios very very similar to it, because again, the vast majority of us, you would hope. Um, and hope it remains this way. Have not found themselves at a crime scene with a with a body there or in a position where a body is left. You know, with in with in cozy crime, people know cafes, people know restaurants, people know Penrith, they know uh, the, the the north coast of Northern Ireland. They know these places, and and they they, they all have their connections to them. And, and that's again one of the one of the lovely things that I've had since the Bingo Hall Detectives came out is people from Penrith and people from Cumbria and Ellswater and and. and Carlisle and all the rest of it, who have said to me that they have thoroughly enjoyed seeing seeing their hometown, seeing their area on that platform, and that's a massive, massive honour for me. That's a, that's that's a huge, huge privilege for anyone to to, to, to ever think that because you know in, in the Lake the Lake District in the UK is, has had its fair share of very, very of more giants than 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 I shall ever be paying tribute to it as a landscape and as a place. And it was very much, very much a conscious decision to set the book in that area, and it is my own tribute to it as well. And um, and a lot of that is is exactly like Chris says, and I think Sam asked the question. A lot of it is to be able to go to that place. When you're not there, and or under certain circumstances, and we've all had a we've all had a, a, a rough couple of years. We've we've all had it. Some have had it rougher than others. I'm I'm one of the lucky ones where it where kind of got out of the the other end of it unscathed, thankfully. Um, and cozy crime, I think, is the answer, uh, and I think it's always been the answer, and I think it always will be the answer um, for, for times and situations like that because exactly as we say, you've got a connection there usually with the author. And that will inherently mean that you use the author, write it passionately and 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 and, and with, with a great deal of pride. And yeah, absolutely. Laura says she felt the same as Chris. Not normally homesick until lockdown. She's also from Northern Ireland originally. Do you put Stroke City? Does that mean something to you, Chris? Um, yeah, is that Derry slash London Derry? Perhaps she will answer. I think that's, that's what's in my head. She said it was cured by Philip Jordan's definitely not cosy debut. Oh, well, I'm always up for a bit of Northern Irish crime, so if you whack the title in the in the comments, that'd be good. I'd like to 
to read some of Philip Jordan. Yeah, his his books are great. Oh, sweet. I've not heard. Um, cool. I'll definitely check him out. Yeah, it's always fun. Um, Gary Donnelly did a really good series as well, which isn't crazy either. Um, uh, they were really good, set in Belfast. Yeah, really good. Laura, also slightly further up, made another good point about Cozy being kind of a good gateway to younger readers of the genre. You know, because she's giving them something that's not going to focus on the the gore aspect as much that you maybe don't want them to read, but you could introduce them to, like, the finger hole detectives or, I don't know, I'm trying to think of another good example, but Stonebridge Mysteries. <laughs> I'll, I, I, that, that, th th okay. Those examples are great, Kaz, we'll stick with those. <laughs> yeah. <I'll> keep those. <laughs> um, well, you know, um, I read The Dinner Lady Detectives as preparation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's yep. another good one. Um, there's not like a lot of things in them that are going to offend anyone, are there? You know, no. So you could give them to younger, younger sort of people just exploring the genre quite easily. Yeah, I teach in year six, um, so ten and eleven years old, and a few of the children uh, have told me that they've read them at home. Um, there was one, there was a, an event I did at the library in Marple where we live, and um, a couple of the children came. And at the end, the parents were like, which one would you recommend? Like, which one doesn't have so much in it? Uh, or like, you know, gory or crime or whatever. Um, and I recommended one because I thought, well, like, there's, there's sort of one where a body, there's a body line with like sort of vomit flecked on it. And I thought maybe a bit. And there's one where I thought, well, I, I can't think of anything that's wrong in that one. So I recommended that one. I think it's the fourth in the series. And then at the end of it, the, oh, I can't really say, but they do something where the way they solve the crime they use furry handcuffs um, that uh, have been definitely used in a bedroom. <laughs> and I thought that is not the one to recommend a, a child in my class. But hopefully, the uh, the sort of um, the alluding to it rather than making it very obvious what their use was for might have hopefully passed them over. <laughs> but yeah, I think I it is a good know. way in. I still no, unless I'm yeah, you're know, on the plums, unfortunately. I think it's. I think it. I, I, it's. It's. It's not something that I. It's not something that I went into it aware of. But I think it's. I think it's really, really nice. I think it's a really, really nice notion because, you know, I. I was introduced to to, to reading, uh, reading for fun at a very, very young age. My my uh, P one teacher told my mum, uh, told my mother, you know, get him to read anything, whether it's the Beano or anything like that, and. Uh, and I always had the caveat that she wasn't being derogatory towards the the writing in the, in the Beano or or, or it's or, 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 you know you know fellow Phil comics because I still get my Beano annual every Christmas. My my grand used to get me it, and my mum now gets me it. Um, and uh, and I read it, and it's brilliant. It's you know it's it's you pick up obviously a lot more of it when you're an adult that, that little you know winks and nudges and and stuff. But you know any any opportunity to get younger generations, and that's the thing. Like you know my sons too. And we read every night before he goes to bed, and it's me reading, obviously. Um, and any sort of introduction to, to 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 that to that as a pastime, I'm I'm all for. And I think I think cozy crime is 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 a is a really really good introduction to, to what is a massive massive genre and, and and filled with wonderful wonderful writers and wonderful wonderful talent. Uh, and I think cozy crime probably is a really really good introduction to it because that's that's the thing. It can get graphic, you know. Crime crime fiction can get graphic. We, we all know it. We've all read books that, that have, you know, that made us want to keep the light on at night when we go to bed, um, or indeed we've put down because they're too graphic. It's it's all it's all it all happens. Um, but cozy crime, you know, you've got that safety barrier, you've got that safety net underneath you that, as bad as it might get in it, it's never going to be that bad, uh, or at the very least, it's never going to come across as being that bad. He says. Wait till you read the film Child with Death. <laughs> You've hit my um, teacher respect level even more now, Chris, teaching at primary school. Ugh. Yeah, that's why I'm getting out. <laughs> little, little, little kids are now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tough and it's tiring, and um, uh, but I still think it's the best job in the world. And um, you know, I've been I've been sort of offered a very exciting opportunity, but. If it hadn't been for that, you know, I saw myself teaching for the rest of my career, and and um, you know, I one day I might go back to it. But yeah, as it stands, I've got five weeks left, 
and it's terrifying and exciting. <laughs> How long have you been a teacher, Chris? How long has this been? 12 years. Oh, blimey. Yeah. Blimey. So if you taught, if you taught like say an eleven year old or a twelve year old, they are now in their twenties. Yeah, well, I, I I saw someone and they I I don't think they recognised me, but I was walking around a shop yesterday, and I think I taught them when they were about seven, and they now look about seventeen and nice. like attitude and stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> you still remember their names and stuff, and it's mental. Um, I, I absolutely, yeah. Like I say, it's it's the most rewarding. But challenging job, I think. Um, yeah, fantastic. I've, um, oh. done I've done it a few more years than that, and it's um, yeah, it's a wild job. Um, yeah. <laughs> Laura says that De it was Derry uh, that she was talking about, and that Code of Silence was a book that she read. The part Code of Silence. Well. Excellent. I'll look it up. Sam's put the link in as well. Ah, brilliant. Thanks, Sam. So that you can look it up, because Sam's disc on it, isn't she? She's brilliant. She is. Um, <laughs> she, um, I, I don't know if it was Sam, but someone asked further up about, like, the sort of length of kind of issues you can push in Cozy Crime. Is there, like, a limit to what you can explore, or...? I think as long as it's tastefully done, um, anything can be talked about. I mean... Some of the more horrible crimes, um, you might, you might not like. I always find like crimes against women, um, even though. I, and I read something. I think it might have been S.J. Watson put something like that said actually um, there was a study done, and it and the results were quite strange. But women liked reading about crimes against women because they saw um, that justice would be done. And it was sort of a strange, like, you know, something you read and you think well, that can't be real, but actually, I think it like it had references and stuff like that. So, um, but I always think there's some things that I I couldn't write about because I, I don't have the experience and I don't know if I could. Uh, I I mean, I'd hope I could talk about it in a sensitive way, and I don't think I could. I would make it gratuitous for the sake, but there's just some things that I would shy away from um, because I don't think. Yeah, I've got the experience to to bring it to life in the way that I would hope to. Um, yeah, I, I but I think most things. Well, I guess cozy's slightly different in that you have to. It's still a murder, isn't it? And it's still a taking of a life, and that's a massive thing. Um, but yeah, I think as long as it's tastefully done, you can tackle most things. But there are definitely some things I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, Chris is right. I I think it's it's how you how you put it across. I think you the, we've talked about it today. How there are certain expectations, there are certain um you know style points that you expect with with something like cozy crime. And if you tick those boxes, if you are able, if you have the the skill set to be able to do that within the confines of that of of the of the cozy expectations, then you probably could get away with it. I think the classic the classic line is no gratuitous sex and violence. That's the that's the, the that's the sort of golden rule from the golden age of crime. Um and I think the a uh, I think there's a there's almost a natural filter. Um, yeah. In in that sense because I think with the with the best will in the world and with the best skill in the world, I think there's there are probably there is probably a, 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 a glass ceiling of the amount of crimes and types of crimes that you could probably only ever get away with in a in a cozy novel, because I, I, again, it, it it comes down to the sort of mechanics of it. You're dealing with a detective uh, who isn't a, a law enforcement officer, who isn't a, a police officer, isn't a private detective who hasn't who doesn't necessarily have that skill set and hasn't been educated and, and know these things, or indeed have access to these things. Um, and that ultimately will limit the the way that the investigation is 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 conducted by the by by whoever your character is. And I think there are certain crimes out there that 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 would that would require a greater level than just say your amateur detectives, amateur Jason in my case, knowing a police officer. You know, you need to have access to MI5 records, MI6 records, you know, Inter Interpol. 
you know, if we're talking about, say, terrorism, for example, if it's, a, if it's an act of terrorism, you know, realistically speaking, you, we're talking about suspended, suspended reality. Realistically speaking, would I expect a 70-year-old and, 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 and her out-of-work journalist son-in-law to tackle an international terror cell? Now that I've said it, yes, absolutely. That's and and look out for that coming to you uh, to a bookshelf. <laughs> um, but hey, uh, uh, th- that's that's the thing about being a writer, though, is it? That's why we've got all we've, we've all got wonderful editors because we and agents and things because we get told, no, don't be ridiculous, Jonathan. You you you've properly <laughs> lost the plot this time. Literally lost the plot this time. But I think I think you know, in a more serious note, I think yeah, it, it's it, it, it's it's kind of what what I said earlier on. If you sit down and write and you want to write a police procedural, but you don't want to have a cop as the lead detective and you want to have show loads of, of, of guts and gore in the, the murder scene and you want to have a copper that's the that's your lead character, you're probably not going to write a, 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 a cosy crime. You're probably going to write a police procedural instead or vice versa. Sorry. Um, and I think, yeah, I think I think that there probably is a there probably is a, 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 a level at which, at which you don't or you, you with the best will in the world, you probably can't get across. Um, however, getting to that stage and getting to that level, that's the challenge. That's the challenge for every cosy writer is to, is to see how, to see who can do it and to see who can do it next and who can keep pushing that, keep, keep raising that, that bar and raising that level and, and making sure that it still, it still very much firmly fits in with the, with the genre. Do you have about three minutes left? To remind people each of you about your book, maybe what you've got coming up next. Um, Chris, do you, can I write, can I remind people of Chris's books? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Chris McDonald. He's the writer of the Stonebridge Mystery Series, which are very, very good. They're set in Northern Ireland, and as we've discovered, they are a fictionalised version of where he grew up. Uh, and he's also a thoroughly nice bloke. If Ooh. that's not cosy, if that's not cosy enough for you, then I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what is. And this feels like a test. Okay, here we go. Jonathan Whitelaw. Um, Bingo Hall Detectives. <laughs> Bingo Hall Detectives. Fantastic book. Uh, Village Hall Vendetta. He's not let me read yet, um, but I'm very much looking forward to it. That's out in May. It's got a very cool cover. Um, also, before that, and it's not got a mention, The Parker Sisters, a fantastic series published by Red Dog. Um, they're coming out with the re- republished ebooks with nice new covers so they're pretty cheap so you can go check them out and if you like them then you can move on to to the newer stuff um mm. and you know he's nice he's a nice man and he's a very good writer and oh, he's well worth your time so um still buy it. mine first though and then check his out after buy it exactly <laughs> buy his first <laughs> Stop it, would you? Where's the bucket? This is getting. This is getting <laughs> it's not even nine o'clock here. Not even nine o'clock in the morning here, and I'm already feeling a bit Tom Dick. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but no, listen. That, that what what again? Chris Chris, Chris touched on it. Uh, Chris mentioned it earlier on. It's a wonderful community. It really, really is. Wonderful community here in the UK Crime Book Club, and uh, I've abs- I've been absolutely delighted to 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 play a very very small part, regardless of what you say, Kaz, and regardless of what Sam says, I played a very very small part in the organisation of this weekend, and and it's been some wonderful discussions, and we've got more coming up, don't we? We've got more. Uh, we've got an Agatha Christie appreciation this afternoon, and then uh, this evening I am hosting the wonderful Janice Hallett. So it's been it's been great, and it, and it, it genuinely is one of the one of the really really good parts of of. of being a writer, being a cozy writer, is, is the community. Yeah, so being a writer it used to be perceived as a lonely business, but it's not. It's not anymore. And and, and that's the, the, whether that's through social media, whether it's through you know online events or indeed real life events. Um, it's always always great to, to sit and talk books and, and and talk about you know doing horrible things to your wonderful characters. <laughs> Well, we'll finish with Sam's comments. She said, thank you all so much for a great hour. Three of my favourite people all together. Best of luck with everything you've got. Oh, bless her. Bless her. She's one of our favourite people as well. Agreed.